Hello guys, welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to see how to configure the persistent hook for the integration also. So in my previous video, I have explained about the integration in SAP Hybrid. So if you have not watched that video, so please go and watch that video first in order to understand the persistent hook uh, for the integration object and why we need the persistent hook. So let's see. So there are two types of persistent hook. One is pre-persist and post-persist. So if you have remembered uh, in previous video, we have created a integration object uh, which is in inbound YTS document. Okay, so we have populated the data. Okay, so uh, before populating the data in the YTS document, we have not validated or we have not manipulated any of the entry uh, which we are getting from the integration API. Okay. So suppose if you want to validate uh, the data which you are getting from the integration API, so how you can validate that? Or else, um, suppose um, yeah, any attributes, suppose we have not used the keyword in the a keyword attribute in the uh, previous video, okay? So we have not populated the keyword. So uh, we want to populate through the business logic which is present in the hybrid. So how you can achieve that? Because we are not, getting this uh, attribute value from the uh, um, integration API. So how we can populate that? So here I have created the use case. So what we will be doing, so as we have not populated the keyword, we want the keyword, uh, which is a type of collection of string. It should have the um, value of code and the document. So keyword will contain always the code and document. Whenever the request we get from the integration API, uh, the keyword will be autom uh, the keyword field we will be not getting from the integration API. You know that. So as we have not uh, checked this, so how we will populating this? We will be populating through our persistent hook. Okay. So here that is the use of the persistent hook. Okay. So how we will populate that in persistent hook? We will we write a code uh, which will populate the keyword with the code and document. So in this way our uh, keyword will be getting populated and saved to the DB. So now let's see the difference between what is the difference between pre and post persist hook. So basically by the name you can understand on the pre persist hook. So basically suppose if you are uh, saving the data, okay, if, uh, before saving the data, if you are validating or manipulating any data before saving it to the DB, then uh, the hook which will be getting called that is the pre persist hook. So in our use case, we will be uh, configuring the pre persist hook because uh, before saving the data, we are populating the keyword in the pre persist hook. We are populating that and then we are saving to the data. So that's why it will be a pre persist hook. Okay. And what is the post persist hook? Suppose uh, when the data is been saved to the DB and then any hook has been called. Okay. Then that will be the post persist hook. So that is the difference between pre and post persist hook. And in this video, we will be doing the use case for the pre persist hook. So let's get started. So I have prepared a note. Uh, so uh, this link you will be getting uh, in the description of this video. So let's do the uh, start the coding for it. So in order to create the pre persist hook, you have to create the package uh, name as SAP exchange dot inbound in YTS code. You have to always uh, create the uh, pre-persist hook, all the hooks in the code. Okay, so let's go to the code base. I will copy this uh, package name as well. Then you have to go to uh, YTS core extension, then go to SRC. And inside this com.yts code, I will right click and create the package. So here the package name is SAP exchange dot uh, inbound. So create this package and inside that package, I will create my persistent hook. So this will be the name of my persistent hook. YTN document, as this is pre persist hook, I will name as pre persist hook. So right click on it and create a Java class and paste that name. So in order to save the time, I will copy paste the code. Uh, once I copy paste the code, I will explain each and every line of this code. Uh, 
you can copy the code from the notes and paste it here okay so it is asking for the pre persist hook so uh, so you have to add a dependency for the pre persist hook okay so you can hover on it and add the dependency and also you have have to add the dependency in the yts code uh, extension info.xml so you can open it and if you go back to the notes here i have provide, provided the required extension so you have to uh, provide the dependency of inbound services so copy this and in yts code open the extension info.xml and paste here so it will add the dependency of pre persist hook okay now let's go through the each line of the code so i have used the logger in order to catch the error logs and i have created the private uh, uh, variable uh, which is model service because you know we will be saving our keyword also we need the model service so if you see here it is the getter setter and if you see what we have to do uh, so if you, uh, uh, our yts document pre persist hook it's implement the pre persist hook so basically in pre persist hook there is one method which is execute okay in which the parameter is item and the context so basically we will override this method okay so if you see you have uh, you have to uh, override that method so in that where the item model is your item type so in our case that is yts document model so you can uh, create a variable of yts document model and then you have to pass that item model uh, to your uh, model name okay so here uh, all the value which we will be hitting from uh, the postman okay which we are getting from the integration api that we will be receiving in the item model okay so here uh, that all value we will be getting in the uh, this variable yts document model then i am painting the log that uh, whether to see whether the call is going to the pre persist hook or not so that will be catching in our hybris log okay that in try catch log um, i am defining the list of keyword because you know our keyword is a list of string if you see keyword is a list of string uh, keyword list if you go to the collection is a list of string so i have defined the uh, i have created the object for list of string and then i am adding according to our uh, business uh, use case okay so i am adding the code and the doc name into the keyword and then i am setting to the our model and then i am saving and refreshing the model and if any error is there in this uh, hook then it will get uh, catch in this error log okay then i am returning the optional uh, that our return type is optional of item model uh, so our item model is yts document model so you have to return that so in this way um, we, you can write the pre persist hook logic so suppose you want to validate any other attributes you, which you are getting from here like uh, uh like uh, this code is alphanumeric or not you can uh, write a logic here so that all things you can do in the persistent hook so that is the use of the uh, hook uh, why you use the hook in the integration so that is the need so now let's do the wiring for this uh, class you know whenever you create a new class you have to do the wiring so as this is in yts code uh, so you have to open yts code string.xml and you can copy the wiring code from the nodes and paste it over here so here you have to provide the bean name you know and here is the class path so if you uh, control click here it will navigate to your hook so and here is the id so be aware so whatever id you are uh, providing here so that id you have to pass in the pre persist hook value in uh, postman when we will be hitting this api okay 
so that time in uh, header we will be using the pip assist code and we have to pass this id okay and you know we are we are, we are using in the pip assist code, we are using the uh, model service class okay we have created the variable for it so we have added it in the property so our wiring is also completed and we have also added the dependency so if you not go, if you not add this dependency you will be get a, getting the error uh, during the build so be aware you also add that dependency so now our coding part is completed now we will build the, our code and we will test um, we will test our integration api uh, with configuring the pre persist code so go back to your code base uh go back to your hybrid setup then go to hybrid then navigate to platform folder and open cmd here and set the environment first hit and env dot back execute this command then hit and i will be back once the build is completed So guys, our server has been started and I have opened the back office. So start your server in debug mode. So we can put the debug in the pre persist hook and we can see whether the um, call is coming to our pre persist hook or not. So let's first check our model. So if you see for the this test one two three four data uh, we will be hitting uh, this entry in order to populate uh, the keyword so here the keyword is already empty so we will populate this through pre-persist hook okay so how we can configure the pre-persist hook now so if you go back to the code here i have mentioned um, in your postman in header you have to give the key as pre persist hook and value as your bean definition of your hook so if you go back to the postman open your api go to headers and here you have to paste the pre persist hook select this and you have to give the value as this your pre persist hook bean id copy this and paste here so let me turn on the debug so i have started the debug so if i hit this integration api so you can see the call is coming here and if i step over so this log will be printed in the hybris console so you can see this persistent hook a yts uh, document pre persist hook has been called so if I release this and if I go to my model, YTS document model, and if I refresh it, so you can see the keyword is been populated by the code and the name. So that's all for this video. Hope you liked it. Thank you.